guys, it's me, Daniela, and here is it's Jack. Uh... And we're here, um, it's our episode two of our Survivor podcast, recapping both episode two and three. So we're going to start with episode two, and we're talking about the Heroes Tribe. So we see that Ben and Chrissy are kind of starting to align a little bit. And it's, uh, it's, it's working good for Chrissy. I'm happy that she's finally got her foot in the door and she can actually like, make social connections without being labeled as like part of the mom squad. So she's got a lot more, she seems like everyone wants to talk to her, so she has a lot more angles that she can play in this tribe, which is good. What do you think? Um, I like, I, I really like Chrissy. I feel like she's definitely using Ben, or it looks like she is using Ben a lot. Mm -hmm. I like that Chrissy has sort of decided that, you know, she needs to hit the ground running at this point because everybody else is sort of doing that. Mm -hmm. And like, she, she analyzed who she could trust and who she couldn't trust. I think that was the best decision that she could make. Yeah, and I think Ben is a really good choice for her. Like, they both have kids, they both have a family, they both can relate on that kind of level. Whereas you have, like, JP and, like, Ashley, who maybe they are not as mature and they can't really relate with her on that level. And they may see her as, like, kind of, like, you know, older mom, so they won't be able to kind of, like, be as tight with her as Ben could be. So I think that they'll hopefully go far in the game but as we see later on that we'll get to there is going to be a swap so i don't know hopefully they forge a good enough relationship that it'll get them far post swap That's yeah for it. sure mm -hmm. you know it's exciting about a swap so much can change and so much new opportunities for different players mm -hmm. i think the one thing i like about chrissy is i feel like she is playing the great game and i hope that you know she can at least keep that relationship because i feel like for her obviously having a generational gap between different people and everything yeah. Um, it's a detriment. It, it would have an impact on her game. Yeah, absolutely. Then we have polar opposite, JP and Ashley, who are getting their little, uh, you know, power couple, even though they're not a couple. And they're like, like fake showmans, alliance, strategic, <laughs> however we want to define it. <laughs> however they want to define it. It changes every episode. <laughs> episode two, she's like, I don't know why they keep saying power couple. And episode three, she's like, He's dreamy, coming off of the shore with his uh, whatever he's caught with that his day. Lobster yeah. and his little fish. So make up your mind, Ashley. What are you? What are you, you doing? You really think that he's she's staring <laughs> at his fish? It's like, oh uh, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't. Yeah, yeah, she's a little bit. I don't know, wishy washy with that, but it seems like she's really into JP. I don't know how much JP is into her. I think he's trying to. He's a little bit playing a smarter game. He's not as like emotional, so he's not trying to like. Like, he's not making it obvious that he wants to be with her, you know? So I think that he's playing a little bit smarter than she is. But, I mean, like, I guess how can you resist you so hunky? But I don't know. Yeah. They're just putting up, like, a, they're putting a target on their back. Is how I feel. Yeah, I feel like for sure, um, 100%, definitely. But I think the one thing that they have going for them is this tribe swap coming up. Yeah, that's um, true. I feel, though, that the heroes actually have gotten a really great dynamic going now. Obviously, Alan's had his paranoia episode <laughs> and everything, and that yeah. sort of subsided. Um, and everybody sort of knows, just walk carefully where Alan's been, just because he'll be paranoid that you, those footsteps look like you have an idol in your pocket. Literally, like, <laughs> then you're going to be stripped down and like, I don't have it! So you don't want to have to deal with all that craziness that is Alan. But it seems like, I honestly think that when they swap... They're gonna drop Alan like a hot potato. He seems like too much of a liability, like emotionally. I, I guess we'll see how it goes, but yeah, unless he like reverts back to like a, a sane, less paranoid state. But mm -hmm. this is a game of survivor people. Like, yeah. it's paranoia runs wild. Yeah, it's easy to sit on your couch and be like, oh yeah, like why are they acting so crazy? But like, you're not there. Like, people are whispering in every corner. People are running for idols. You're running for idols. Like, it's hard to like keep your anxiety and emotions at bay so i don't blame him but like he's only shooting himself in the foot at this point well hopefully people in other tribes when they swap won't know how paranoid he is yeah and maybe. they'll give him a chance and not judge him right off the bat i don't know maybe he'll like revert his loose cannonness a bit back and then once he gets past the first vote then he'll let it loose yeah <laughs> and maybe joe will be like a bigger paranoid crazy energy that he'll like be overshadowed like he'll overshadow alan so i think that maybe i'll work out for him yeah you know? for sure because joe's wild he's crazy that guy we saw it this week we saw it last week we saw it the week before that he's like accusing mike of having idols and then he uh, like goes wanders i know finds the clue but not without help with her friend our little heartthrob cole Oh, I love oh, cool. the little Cole and Jessica relationship. It's like <laughs> it's so adorable. Cute. It's like, wow, really? You're like Jane, the 20, 29 year old virgin or Literally, whatever. Is she 29? 
She's twenty nine. I well, I know, I don't know. I don't even know she's how old young. she is. She's she, I know she's, good. I know she's like in her later twenties. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and he's young. He's like early twenties, yeah. right? But you know, it's, it's a good age show. Age is but man. a number. Yeah, you know, age, age for sure. <laughs> age is but a number, guys. It's okay because they're cute together. Yeah, they really are. I like their little flirt man. I know going. it's adorable, and oh. she's so pure. Yeah, <laughs> she's oh, so sweet. She's adorable. Yeah, and Cole literally like looks like an angel, and like it's. I think they'd be so cute together, and they obviously love each other. But Cole's got to just work on his game. You know, he's good at being social. He's a sweet guy. He likes helping people out. Yeah, he's nice. But then we have uh, Jessica, who's like a lot more. No, like she's she's strategic as well as social, you know, like she's not gonna blubber around about some sort of idol. <laughs> yeah, no, you see it this week when when Cole's like telling everybody about the idol and he's just like, hey everybody, by the way, I'm just gonna grab a meta megaphone from here. Yeah, um, <laughs> give me a minute here. Yeah, Joe has an idol. <laughs> everybody, everybody, he has an idol. Don't worry, it's okay. He has an idol. We'll blindside him someday. Um, brutal. Just brutal. Yeah. Uh, and, and I like that Jessica has that refrainness of like, just you need to watch your back in this game socially. Yeah. No, she's smart because she has ties with Cole, and she also knows when like you're like he's like even though she's not like blinded by love, like she knows like oh Cole's being like kind of a dumb dumb. <laughs> like you know I'm gonna distance myself from this, and like I'm not gonna like contribute to the conversation i'll sit by idly like she never really like showed that she knew before everyone else which is good because it doesn't paint a target on her back like she i think she's playing a pretty smart game considering she is a little bit blinded by love so i'm gonna give her credit jessica gets definitely she gets credit because she did not like i don't i don't i just don't see the need to tell people about an idol unless you're going to council like travel council and now they didn't go and and now they're gonna have a swap yeah it's just like you're painting a huge target on your back now how many people know about joe's idol and how can that bite you in the ass how do they find out oh it was cool like it's just unnecessary but, but part of that too is that they don't necessarily know themselves about the tribe swap coming up that's true so they don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know that, that's something that they should keep in mind like in, in survivor history they've had three or three or four tribes and like it's been prone to switch yeah um and, and that's something that they, they should definitely keep in mind. For sure, yeah. Especially when you start off with three tribes. You have five people in each tribe. like, And we have two like two tribal councils in a row where the same tribe is going. It's going to be hard to play 5v5v3. There's going to be a swap. You have to think about the numbers. But some of these people are more well-versed in the survivor knowledge than others. I mean, some of them are probably recruits. So I'm sure that... They don't know. They're not thinking like three steps ahead. Whereas someone like maybe like Ryan would be like laser focused to like what is happening ahead because he seems like a super fan. He's a super fan. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. he seems like the type. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then moving forward, like, uh, obviously, Joe finds the idol with Cole, and, like, yeah. that's just a huge thing. It's, like, really, like... It was sweet. It was it, good. It was a sweet moment. I felt like, you know, maybe Joe should have, like, aligned a lot closer with Cole. Yeah. And really should have been like, hey, obviously, I'm never going to use my idol on you, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you that I'm going to use it. Yeah. Just so I can gain some trust, so <laughs> you have some liability in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed a little bit odd. Like, he was like, oh, I've seen Cole fishing, and uh, I wanted to tell him about the... Like, I knew he needed someone to, like, figure out what the clue meant, but it seemed, like, I don't... Uh, it just seemed, like, so weird that he would just, like, oh, i seen you fishing, fishing, like, we're... Let's just figure it out. Like, they didn't really have, to what we've seen, like, a pretty strong alliance before, so it's... Like, I don't know what he expected, that he would just keep it quiet, because... Joe didn't promise him anything. No, not, not that we know of. Not that we know of. That's true, too. So it just kind of seemed like a kind of like half thought out plan by Joe. And then again, a half thought out plan by Cole when he told everyone about the idol afterwards. So it seems like a little bit of a craziness going on in the healers tribe. But I mean, they haven't been to travel council yet, so they don't have to worry about it. But soon yeah. they will because of the swap. So uh, I don't. Or like soon, some of them will for sure. Yeah, definitely, and they're going to be in hot water eventually. But but yeah, it's interesting that like obviously every but like the beginning of um, these first two episodes, we have this whole idea that Joe is really teamed up with everybody and is like, okay, we're going to get Mike out and everything, and then it immediately flips by the end of the third episode that it's like, okay, it's obvious now for the healers that we need to get Joe out 
instead of Mike. Yeah, and, and I like was on the social, like, you know, like, Joe's not really meshing with people. He's, like, kind of a very, like, type A, like, like very in-your-face personality that doesn't really get along with many people like you in, in this game you kind of have to know when to shut up and pick your battles like if there's a raw potato i'm eating it <laughs> like i don't care all you get is like rice and like a bit of a crab like little leg like, yeah i don't know i call it the crab shell if i need to honestly and this guy's <laughs> complaining about the potato being slightly like undercooked like you're gonna like ruffle feathers. I don't know. It just seems nah, stupid. You're pissing people with cornflakes. What game are you trying not to play? Yeah, and then <sighs> see the vote flips from him being pretty much like center at the top to right at the bottom. So I don't know. He's not really playing a great social game, but he has an idol, so we'll see how that goes for him. Yeah. I don't know. It just it's really when are you like you need to make sure that you're gonna use it. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And he doesn't go home within his pocket. Yeah. I think it might happen. He seems like a little bit like he has a big ego. And like if people were like, oh, yeah, we're good. No worries. We're fine. He wouldn't use it. And he'd go home with it in his pocket. But I also feel, too, though, that he may he may be one of those, um, like, castaways that, like, get so cocky and everything. And, like, everything that he doesn't. Or, like, get so paranoid that it's, like, he gives the idol on a day that he, he um. probably won't even have like it won't even be aligned like won't even be the target so you're so basically his two like possible plans are like going home with it in his pocket or like using it when he doesn't need to yeah. never gonna use it properly <laughs> but, like maybe not like i'm just looking at it at the paranoia um like view that we see yeah that, i think that's true too he doesn't really seem 100 percent logical all the time with his thoughts i don't know i don't i don't love his gameplay i'll be real with you yeah. <laughs> i don't love it but he's still there so you know he's doing better than our first three evictees so i can't say much but that's my two cents don't love him but hopefully he sways me i have an open heart we'll see <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure and like moving forward like we've like obviously the healers have had that sort of dynamic and everything but the hustlers have been completely different they're a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that is I ugh, I feel bad for them. Like going from five to three, like that's rough. And they just they don't have what you were saying before, like team cohesion. They don't no. they don't work well together. There's all these cracks, people saying stuff behind other like it's just not a good vibe. You know, we got some smart people in the tribe too. We have like Allie who's a great strategic player and she's like Talking to everyone gives people, like, subtle advice, but not condescending. Like, she just seems like she's in everyone's ear. And, like, she, they think that she's helping them, but she's really just helping herself, which is, I love that. Oh, yeah. You know, she's smart. She's good. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I think that's really a bit about her profession herself. Like, she was an assistant to um, a famous YouTuber, and I feel like that dynamic that she has there is really important because like you have to think being an assistant you got to know everything and anything especially being a youtuber because like you have to know your ins and outs who to contact why to contact like the whole business of youtube overall mm -hmm. and a lot of that is just interpersonal communication and that's what i think is key in her game yeah i really want to see her go far she's like amazing in every way i like her a lot but i also do think that ryan is has something good going for him like he's pretty like he's smart yeah his i, I feel like the thing is with Ryan, like, I feel like he, he has a lot of, like, the male, um, like, male alliance members, like, he's yeah. very aligned with them, yeah. whereas, um, Ali is a lot more aligned with the female. Females, it's true, like, her learner type. Yeah, and it would be interesting to see if the two of them sort of maybe connect the dots and align together to be a strategic partnership. Yeah. Well, hopefully, it will, like, well, they kind of might have to, like, when the swap happens. I think they might try to stick together. Yeah. I think. They seem like now that Patrick's gone, spoiler alert, um, <laughs> I think that they're going to be a lot more tight. Because everyone seems like, De like, Devin, Ryan, Lauren, and Allie all seem pretty chill. You yeah. Know? I don't know. I think it'll be good, but... I kind of went off schedule here a little bit. Yeah. But you know what? That's like, those are my thoughts on the tribe dynamic so far. Yeah, I like Lauren. I think that she's very I much a strong player. Like, I, yeah. I like her dynamic. I like how that, you know, she is in a tribe where it's like majority younger people who really have a hustle mentality, yet mm -hmm. her perspective is completely different. Yeah. Obviously, she's a bit more introverted in like being in her career and occupation and everything, but I feel like, you know, that's a benefit to her because, you know, she can 
and speak up for herself and have her own voice. Yeah, I like how, like, I find that a lot of these, like, older women seem to be, like, having to be quieter. Like, even, like, Mom Squad, like, episode one, like, they seem to just be, like, bottom of the barrel, like, shut your mouth. Like, they're not, like, authoritative sometimes because they feel like they can't be. But I like that Lauren was kind of a little bit of an outcast, but she still wasn't afraid to, like, speak her mind and say, like, hey... I don't like you. I don't like that you're doing this. Like, she'll call people's bullshit. And I'm like, yes. Like, I'm sitting on my couch and I'm like, do it. Because I see so many of these older women just go home for a second boot. They don't fight. Lauren's scrappy as heck. Like, she will go to the travel council and she'll be like, you're bad. I don't like you. I'm better. This is why. And she just lays it out. She's not afraid to do that. And like, I like that, you know? Oh, yeah. We don't see enough people fighting. Like, how many people are on this season every year? Like, you're so lucky to be on the show and she knows that and she's like, you know what? I'm going to heck and go for it. it. Yeah, and I like that. But like her, yeah. you know, she really like, she's really going for it. So I like that. I appreciate that. I like Lauren. What I like with the Hustlers in these past two episodes is you have like probably three main storylines. You have obviously Patrick and mm -hmm. Lauren and then you have a smaller storyline of it being like um, Ali and Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, those two, like Ali and Ryan, are a bit more like un undertones of like strategy and dynamics in the tribe itself, mm -hmm. if they're functioning day to day. But like, you obviously have the conflict between Patrick and everybody, and Lauren and Pat uh, Lauren versus Patrick and yeah. Lauren versus everybody. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, pa poor Patrick. Patrick just seems like an excitable young professional man who's like a kid at heart, like a little puppy. But I can honestly see how it would rub everyone the wrong way. Like, he's just somebody, like, he's just too much. Especially, like, we're talking about, like, I, it's like, at the challenge, too. Like, he just wants to, like, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it, you know? It's, it's exhausting. I can't imagine being on an island with him for, like, one day. <laughs> Especially, like, looking at it, like, okay, what do they eat? Like, uh, like, how are they sleeping? Like, all that sort of stuff. That has a huge, like, him being so extroverted and so... Um, and everything like that it's like you can really see how that can wear on people mm -hmm. so thinly especially yeah. someone like Ali who wanted to align with him initially and did she really understood the toll of him being on this tribe yeah I like how she didn't put all her eggs in one basket and she wasn't just Actually, like, she's like very adaptable in the way she said like she saw that like oh, okay it's not working for him people are starting to not like him so whatever I'll be closer to Lauren yeah and it worked out for her. And now Lauren thinks that her and Allie are super close. I think they are. But I yeah. mean, like, I think that Allie is less like Lauren in the way that she's loyal, but not to a point where it would be, like, detrimental to her game. Like, she's okay with cutting ties to get further. Whereas I think Lauren seems more, like, loyal, you know, like, we'll yeah. stick with you for a while type of thing. But Allie's just like, Patrick isn't working for me, so bye. See you never. And I like that, you know, because you got to think about number one first. So it's good. I think she's smart. I think her and Ryan are really, like, leading the force on the Hustlers tribe. Yeah, and, like, I, I feel like um, Pat, uh, Mr. Hashtag, let's get this trending, people. Hashtag Petty Patrick here is, he is like, he, he um, I feel like his, like, the whole idea of him was, like, just a really great casting and everything. Yeah, he was. Uh, as a hustler and everything, you can yeah. tell his work ethic and everything, and, like, being a hardworking person, but it's also, like, compared to a lot of other people in this tribe, it's, like, like it's just it's understandable why he would be such an outcast yeah yeah no i feel you i 100 percent feel you he just it's it's about hard work but it's also about teamwork and yeah. he's like what is he like an entrepreneur yeah. so, so he's probably used to being the boss and he's probably to used to calling alone. yeah call, being alone calling the shots not having to like work too much with other people like i mean obviously he has to work and delegate and help like in like you know, plan things for other people, but he doesn't have to, like, work in tandem with other people. Whereas, and that's what kind of, like, shot him the foot in the challenge, where people were like, hey, pass the ball. Hey, let's switch out. And he's like, no, 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 I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I'm a hustler. I can hustle through. It. But, like, yeah, it's about working hard, but working hard together. And, and that's what he kind of missed the mark. For sure, 100%, I agree. And, like, the one thing I'll say is, like, I think what one thing that a lot of these tribes underestimate, especially in the early... Um, like weeks of the like of this season like the early tribal councils is like i understand that like you're looking for a lot of like physical people and everything the but the thing is like you have to have a really well very well cohesive tribe i mm -hmm. felt like 
that's why the healers are doing so well. It's like, yes, they have their own inner conflicts and everything, but a lot of these people do mesh together really well. And even with that too, the heroes, they mesh well together. Obviously, you have this really good dynamic between each other. That's where the hustlers really underestimate this. It shouldn't really be about physical strength or anything. It should be about how well can we work together as a team because ultimately, this is a team challenge. This is your tribe. And like Lauren said, if you're gonna if if you're gonna sing together, you're you're gonna swim together. That's yeah, it. That's true. If you're gonna win, you're gonna lose. Yeah. As a team, and that's it. It's very true. Yeah, Lauren had some good lines there at Travel Council. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Travel Council? Why not? Let's dive into it. <laughs> All right. So episode two, we had the hustlers at their first Tribal Council. So they got to dip their little flame in the fire and whatever. Walked live down their the life. Little yeah. It was great. And then we heard started talking. It was a little bit of a Patrick versus Simone argument. So Simone's like rooting for Patrick to leave because she knew that like that Patrick was rubbing like everyone the wrong way, but mostly Lauren. So she was kind of trying to pull Allie and Lauren onto her side to vote against Patrick. And then Patrick, we have like kind of trying to be like, I'm the strength of the tribe. Like, you know, I, I can do it. Like, you know, what is Simone offering? Like, keep me on. And they're trying to like sway everyone to his side. So it's kind of like a little brawl, you know? Yeah, and trying to be all intimidating, trying to be like, yo, like I understand that like Simone, like I, I, I'm not the best here, but like Simone screwed up on the puzzle. That's why Simone should leave. And like the one reason why I'm wearing this buff today is because obviously in uh, Survivor Nicaragua, Amazing season. Um, Brenda was one of the strongest, one of our very strong um, Asian American female competitors. And like, I just feel like we don't get to see that a lot on Survivor. True. And yeah. On Survivor, on Big Brother, on like anything really. Yeah. yeah very, very true. And she was really well spoken. She wasn't like bad at challenges. Like, I mean, like, if you're going to pick a puzzle, be good at a puzzle, sure. But like, every puzzle is different. It's kind of yeah. hard, you know? Like, ugh. I don't know, I did like her. She was very well spoken and she was definitely a lot more tolerable than Patrick. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I guess she was not persuasive enough because she ended up going back and uh, she got out in a, what, five to one? Yeah. You know, against her. So no one voted for her. And, like, the one thing <laughs> I'll girl. say about that, too, is like, I feel like when you look at these two people, you look at Patrick, who's very sociable, very loud, and everything like that, compared to very soft-spoken Simone yeah. it's like you can see you can tell just through body language and everything and being through a tribe that's currently trying to unify each other and everything yes the car's driving behind me um but like having you try unity can be so important and it's like like that's the thing it's like I understand like Simone's very soft-spoken and everything but at least she actually listens to people takes directions and everything like that whereas Patrick's just sort of like loud and trying to be intimidating but I feel like that that's why Patrick made it through and got Simone out is because he had such a big intimidating personality that really nobody wanted to go against each other in mm -hmm. this first initial tribal council no I agree with you I think if Simone actually like spoke up more and was more like like, look at what's happening, look at how he is, like, the way Lauren did the next yeah. week. More authoritative. Yeah, just, yeah. like, like just dug in a bit more, campaigned a bit more against him. Like, I feel like the results may have been different because people were already on the fence with Patrick. Maybe not as much as they were the next Tribal Council, but people already knew that he was rubbing people the wrong way. So I think if she actually campaigned a bit more, it would have been to her favor. But Maybe it's not in her nature. She obviously wanted to be there, but I think she's just soft-spoken, to yeah. be honest with you. She did try to campaign, but not to the extent of Lauren, who was very confrontational yeah. about it, which I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, and, like, uh, like obviously, too, like, you, you're in a tribe called Hustlers, like, and yet you can't hustle your way out of this situation compared to someone else who's a entrepreneur, who's a hustler. It's like, I understand you're a diverted, dive, um, what's it called? diversity advocate and everything yeah. um it's but you need to actually like you use your voice and actually stand up for yourself because that's the name of the game here yeah i know if you're used to advocating for other people you should be good at advocating for yourself I'm oh i'm just saying burnt. just saying you know if it's what you do for a living i mean i think she did do it but i also think maybe in the profession of like diverse uh, diversity av like an advocate you're a you are so if it's like a personal case by case thing, you are soft-spoken. If you're working with a client or something like that, 
it's not like she's on the street like ah, you know like pay, like like with like signs and everything so I don't know maybe it's just the way she's used to doing it in her profession I don't know but I'm gonna leave it with my earlier remark that you should be able to advocate for yourself if that's your profession but didn't end up working for her she left five to one and um then we were on to the next tribal council which in my opinion was a lot more oh wait no we forgot the best part when he when Patrick was like I trust most of the people in this tribe Whoa. that was that was that oh, was a mic drop that my was our, goodness yeah for real that caused some waves some looks like how'd you feel about that I was like Ooh. wilding out Oh yeah, that was like that was that was funny. It's like really, that's when you need to watch what you say, especially in tribal council. Yeah. It's like, oh, I trust most people here. It's like really, like this is the beginning of the game. It's all about relationship management, and you trust most people. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. good. Not smart, and that's if I was Simone at that point, I would have rang. I would have just like milked that for all it was worth. You just like served you a platter of gold. I was like most. What do you mean by that, Patrick? most like i would have just yeah. called him out i was like yes. dive deep into yeah. that rip some weaves don't worry about it yeah he almost made it easy for her to kind of be like he's snake like just get him to leave but i mean it didn't work out yeah, yeah. For i almost forgot that i can't believe it yeah. that was oh, like that was... an iconic moment and, yeah. and like that's the thing like that um like obviously like simone wasn't really in the mood to dive that deep into everything yeah, so true. yeah can't do anything about that but I liked her. She was great. Hope she, well, I mean, hope someone like her comes back. I don't know if she'll come back yeah. <laughs> with her second last place. To, but, you know, Francesca came back. Who yeah. knows? She could. <laughs> she could. Francesca, you mean? Yeah, yeah Francesca. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm you. dehydrated, okay, everybody? Like, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> love that guy. So good. I love Philip. So, so great. Uh -huh. And now we're on to tribal number two, or I guess tribal number three, but second one for the hustlers. Where once again, Patrick is on the chopping block, surprising no one. Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler alert. I mean, this whole thing is them. But yeah. yes, spoiler alert. It's going to be a little bit of a Patrick versus Lauren fiasco. Patrick, due to the fact that during the competition, at the throwing the balls thing, he would not let anyone else throw the balls, even like a person who played softball for Petty. 25 years. Yes, Petty. Like, what the <laughs> heck? And the whole thing is like, even if you think you can do it, just pass it along because it makes you look like a like a, a caring individual yes <laughs> and if you don't you look like a not caring individual like you just it's not even when competitions are going on you're still playing a social game you know like no one wants a fucking overachiever like keener unless you're fucking great which he meh, questionable questionable you know those are my two cents i don't know i didn't and yeah, uh, like that's the thing it's like you know what? i understand patrick he's like miss prideful patrick um just trying to make as many rhymes as the hashtags. Um, yeah, I love Feel it. free. Um, prideful Patrick here. Uh, he, I, he, I understand that you really want to be the hero here, but it's like, you're, like, it's a team. It's a team effort. Like, I understand that, like, you're, you feel like this is your task and everything, but it's like, you have someone that played softball for, like, 25 years or yeah. whatever. Miss Lauren here, like you should at least give her an opportunity. Definitely. I was like, what the heck? You just totally gypped her off of something she could do really good at because why you wanted to show your worth, but really that like literally he was already one foot in the grave, that sunk him. Hundred percent that sunk him. Like that combined with like the way he is at camp, like he was he was he was done for it's like it's like going to a baseball game being like a manager at a baseball game and uh instead of putting the guy who's done 40 home runs this season get the hot dog vendor to serve kitchen <laughs> it's like come on That's here funny. like i understand that like you know he he may hit a couple balls and everything but you maybe you should at least try to put on the the person you've gotten the for MVP. Yeah, yeah. the MVP here. For real, you know, and it was kind of disappointing to see that because I would have wanted to see Lauren just like fucking nail some. Sorry guys, the camera came off, but uh, we were talking about Lauren and how she should have been the one that at least got to throw some of the balls for the blocks at the challenge, and that's kind of what ultimately sunk Patrick's game because he proved to everyone that he wasn't really like a team player. And that kind of was shown at Tribal Council, where like everyone was kind of calling him out, like, why didn't you pass it on? And he he did admit that he was sorry and he made a mistake, but like, actions speak louder than words, in my opinion. That's how I feel. Exactly. And like, the thing that I'll say too is it's like, okay, 
I understand why like he's trying to self like trying to minimize his self blame and everything and trying to be as neutral as possible in this tribal council because he's trying to use it as a persuasive tactic but you have to understand that you know this happened the same thing happened last time and you're just in Simone's position and um, Lauren happens to be in your position obviously that whole dynamic is that you know you're deciding to be neutral in a situation that you really you shouldn't be neutral you should have some some kind of way to defend yourself yeah i agree i don't know he didn't end up like putting up his dukes and fighting against her and she was very much he she really clawed her way through that like travel council she really did defend herself and i enjoyed seeing that that she was like a strong independent woman and she was like fighting for a spot in survivor she was really impressive the way she just called him out. The best line of the night, I never trust, I don't even know how she said it, but she's like, I don't, I never trusted Ginger or something like that, like a red Yeah, yeah, I never trusted a red head. It's like... A day in my life <laughs> or something. And I was like, what the heck? But I also loved it, it was so funny. I was like, what are you talking about, Lauren? I don't even know. But I mean, like, her, her distrust in Patrick paid off, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. Because she ended up staying another day in Survivor, or another three days in Survivor. So I, w I was impressed with her. I thought she really like rose to the occasion. She influenced a lot of people, whereas before she was a lot more like on the outs than Patrick was. And she really did turn the tribe around and view her in a more favorable light than Patrick. So I think she did a lot of hustling the past three days and it did turn out in her favor. I'm proud of her, for yeah, sure. For sure. I, I, like, uh, I like Lauren as like a um, castaway and like I think she was a great cast and I'm excited to see what comes next with her. Yeah, same. She seems super dope. And I'm glad that she got to stay. And Patrick really was not happy about that blind blindside, I guess. Yeah, she, he didn't know what was going on. No. He was pissed. Oh my goodness. Oh, calling everybody out. His mother, yeah. his grandmother, his oh uncle, God. his friendly uncle, all of them uh, buddy around the there. The friendly one too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. He was like, I hate all you guys. What did he say? He was like, Oh, like, oh, I hate you all. Like, why aren't you? Uh, he didn't say that, but he, he said, said something. something like, I don't know. He said something mean. Though. He sort of regret. Like, he, he's. It's one of those things where you look back at it five years and you probably are going to regret, regret it. saying that, yeah. But basically, he <laughs> sort of, like, called everybody out and was like, oh, why, are, like well, why are you doing that? It's just, like, weird. I don't trust you all. Like, I think it's just wrong. It's disrespectful. Yeah, like, for stuff real. Like that. He was salty AF. And when he, like, when the votes were read and he was evicted, he, like, just, like, sat there and he turned around and he, like, looked at everyone with this, like, look. Yeah. Literally, and then he was like, <sighs> like, damn, the fools could kill. He was pissed. Oh, but, yeah. Like, I mean, it was unanimous, sense. four to one, so everyone really did, like, vote together. And I honestly think that that shows, I mean, we did get a unanimous vote last week, too, with Simone, but yeah. I think that was a little bit strong arming from, like, the males and the tribe. But I think that unanimous vote, like, the vote that happened this week really shows that, like, they are, like, going to be a, a bit more harmonious, like, as a tribe. Okay. And then what's going to happen next week is drop your buffs. That's right. Tribe swap merge question mark. Who knows? I'm hoping it's going to be a two team merge. Two tribe. As opposed to yeah. another, like, I don't want it to be three. A three tribe swap. Because no. that's just like a dosey do there that it really doesn't benefit anybody. It doesn't benefit anyone. It lasts like two episodes and. and what are they the going to do four? Happens. What is it going to even be? Four v four v four? Is that the numbers we have right now? Uh, no, we have four v five. Four. We have five v six v four. Oh, yeah. So I don't yeah. know. Honestly, I don't think it's gonna be like. I would like two because two could last longer. Two could last till the merge. And like the dynamics in the, in a in a two tribe, especially with it coming from a three tribe to a two tribe, would be amazing. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be fun to see. That. And they're gonna be a lot more complex, like relationships and like layers as opposed to if you have a group of what three or four people or four I guess four or five people it's going to be a lot harder to like you're going to have obviously less options to socialize with and like less people to align with and I want to see like some older people being paired with some other older people to have some common bonds and some younger people pairing up with like uncommon pairs of even how we see now with uh, who is it Devin and Ryan that's a kind of nice to see I want to see if we can get some more of those so we can see like a lot more options for pairs and groups with a two-person alliance. Yeah, for sure. Or, or sorry, two-person two tribe. Yeah. yeah, and like, I, I completely agree. I feel like 
the the whole idea of having like three traps i can understand it but really the dynamics there are really obvious and they've been played out a lot in the consistently in the past few seasons mm -hmm. personally i would love to just do it where it's like you have two tribes because obviously there's a lot more layered development there um yes some people will, will obviously be getting the purple kelly kelly edit mm -hmm. where they're like basically not even there does he work yeah exactly honest. um and, and like that's the thing i feel like having a two tribe and then going to one tribe i think that will increase the dynamics a lot better strategically and everything rather than just having three tribes yeah because then we think about it if you go from a two like two tribes to to the merge one tribe you have a lot of people who already know people like more people from each tribe as opposed to having like going from three to one you don't know like half the tribes or whatever potentially if you haven't been with them already i didn't really explain yeah. that but you know what i'm saying like you'll be able to socialize with more people if you're on two tribes than one so it's kind of nice because it won't be like you're like starting over again per se you'll have ties in a lot of different places that's yeah. why i think it'd be kind of fun to see yeah too. and like instead of going like from three like basically if you go like three tribes and then tribe swap back to three tribes it's basically like you know at least a third of the people in the game now or mm -hmm. like at least a, a, a lot more of a, a bigger amount of people in the game now yeah. um because you go from like say um like you go from like say if everybody had six people in their tribe you would get to know at least another four at least and that's a considerable amount knowing how the tri tribes are paired up yeah yeah so i think i would like two hopefully it's two we will see yeah not until next week next wednesday baby yeah and let you know what let us know what you think about down below about these two episodes along with that uh what's gonna happen next week's episode who knows uh yeah and if you want to like it our like button yeah it's gonna look like something like that something like that maybe like that double like who knows if you want to subscribe right down there and yeah. if you want to hit post notifications ah. click that bell right there woo that's it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. All right. Perfect see you next timing. week or two weeks from now. Yeah. Hey. See you two weeks from now. Uh, we'll be doing a podcast sometime around Halloween. Oh, yeah. Trick yeah. or treat. Yeah. All right. See you guys.